never will run dry It's an open heaven that's your releasing And we will never be denied We're stirring up deep, deep wells We're stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna dance in the river Dance in the river We're stirring up deep, deep wells We're stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna jump in the river Jump in the river Deep cries out to, deep cries out to Deep cries out to, deep cries out to We cry out to, we cry out to You Jesus never will run dry It's an open heaven that's your releasing and we will never be denied Come on. Stirring up deep, deep wells Stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna dance in the river Dance in the river Stirring up deep, deep wells We're stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna jump in the river Jump in the river Deep cries out to, deep cries out to Deep cries out to, deep cries out to We cry out to, we cry out to You, Jesus
party on, Garth. Isn't it okay we can come to church and still have a good time and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. I don't know how some of you could sit still when that was going on. Amen. It makes me want to sing. There is an endless song echoes in my soul. I hear the music ring And though the storms may come I am holding on To the rock I cling How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love How can I keep from shouting your name When I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing You are loved by the King of Kings this morning, amen mm -hmm. I will lift my eyes in the dark for I know that my Savior, He lives And I will walk with you Knowing you'll see me through And sing the songs you give Oh, how can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say From shouting your name When I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing Listen I can sing in the troubled times Sing when I win I can sing when I lose my step And I fall down once or twice again I can sing cause you pick me up Sing cause you're there I can sing cause you hear me Lord When I call to you in prayer I can sing with my last breath Sing for I know And the saints around the throne How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? Jesus, I know I am loved by the King and it makes my heart I am loved by the King And it makes my heart Listen, you are loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing If no one's told you today they love you I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you No matter where you've been No matter what you've done He loves you You are loved by the King Amen Get some help on this one. Come on, everybody. I've had a lot of troubles and trials in my little life span. But when I'm standing alone and the battle gets hot, I always get the best I can. I must have crossed a million valleys and shed a million tears. But when I come to the river Jordan, hallelujah. Then I'll have no fear Oh, then I'll have no fear You know why? Cause I got one more river to cross One more mountain to climb One more valley that I gotta go through Leaving my troubles behind Oh, I got one more battle with 
the devil And I know he'll understand Listen, I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah Holding to his nail scarred hand Oh, holding to his nail scarred hand There's mm. been a lot of people talking about me Since I walked this narrow way Oh, but this is just another little valley I came through it when I prayed I climbed a lot of high mountains And crossed a lot of little streams Listen, but when I see old Jordan cold and dark That'll be the last for me Hallelujah, hold into his nail scarred hand. Oh, hold into his nail scarred hand. Well, I got one more river to cross, one more mountain to climb. Oh, one more valley that I gotta go through. Oh, I'm leaving my trouble behind. Oh, one more battle with the devil. And I know he. Sing if you believe it. I'm going through with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going through with Jesus. One more time. Come on. Louder. Come on. I'm going through with Jesus. Hallelujah. Holding to his nails. Gone ahead. Oh, holding to his nails. Gone ahead. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Jerry. I've missed you guys. I've missed this church. You might be going through a storm in your life. A little more vocal. I know one who can calm it for you. Listen. My boat of life sails on a troubled sea. Ever there is a wind in my sail. But I have a friend who watches over me when the breeze turns into a gale.
Isn't Sonia incredible? Come on now. Give her a hand. It feels good in here this morning. I mean, it feels, this is what church should feel like. Exciting. I believe if you'll have a heart for God and you'll pray to be used by him and not what others can do for you, I believe God will honor that. I can't wait to get to heaven. I sang this song the other night. There's a lot of hurt in the world today. We have a promise that this is not our home. We're not home yet. Love without measure, space without time, life with no crying will one day be mine. Hearts never breaking, hands that don't fight, days that don't end with the darkness of night. The lamb and the lion will walk side by side in a world where freedom abides. Oh, oh, oh. windows of glory swing open wide, shower down blessings and shine. to see that's what heaven will be like oh that's what heaven will be friends that don't leave you smiles that don't fade nobody's hurting and no one's afraid no hungry children and loved ones don't die no sad farewells there'll be no more goodbyes oh windows of glory the swing open wide shower down blessings and shine down a light on my soul i do believe oh to see, oh, that's what heaven, all the burdens and the longings that we bring to this place disappears in the moment that we look at the love on his face. Oh, I do believe, oh, that's what No more, no more wars, no more bombings, no more tornadoes. The King of Kings will wipe every tear from our eyes. Oh.
Thank you. One day we'll stand before the judge. We'll have to give an account of every action, every thought, every deed. I have an advocate with the Father, though. We know the judge. Listen to these powerful words of this song. And then I want you to make Jamie Rago welcome. accused there's a list a mile long of all my sins of everything that I've done wrong I'm so ashamed there's nowhere left for me to hide this is the day that I must answer for my life my fate is in the judge's hands but then he turns to me and he says begin to comprehend what kind of grace oh would take the place of all my sins I stand in awe now that I have been set free and the tears well up as I look at that cross cause it should have been me but my fate was in guard hands oh and he stretched them out for me and said I know you I love you I gave my life to save you love paid the price forgive yourself to oh I'm falling on my knees to thank you with everything I am I praise you so grateful for the words I heard you say I know you I love you I gave my Christ I'm not guilty well, good morning hope you don't mind if I speak from down here I can eyeball you a lot better you know it's the difference between a pastor and evangelist the pastor's job is to comfort the afflicted the evangelist job is to afflict the comforted <laughs> <clears throat> and I really enjoy doing that. 
And I try, this is ringing, brother, sister, whatever you are. <laughs> you ever been talking to somebody and had that gender confusion? You couldn't tell whether it's a guy or a girl. Excuse me, sir. Oh, ma'am. Human. I am sure glad to be here. I'm glad to be anywhere after yesterday. I rededicated my life about eight times out at the park. Those hot dogs were calling my name. I'm on a diet and I hate diets and I hate people that are on diets. Have you ever noticed how many people you have in your life that want to help you lose weight? You shouldn't be eating that. No, you should just mind your own business. How's that? I went on a cruise the other day, uh, and uh, is, uh, I think you had to be 104 just to get on the ship. It's like floating Branson, you know? You ever been to Branson? That's like Las Vegas for people with no teeth. There's a fellow laying out by the pool. He's the whitest human being I've ever seen. I mean, notebook paper white. Blue lines and everything, you know. <laughs> Do you know I got told I don't act my age, and I thought, I don't want to act my age. Have you seen how people my age act? It's like, come on, hon, let's go to the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> they cut grass with black shoes and black socks. And, I mean, seriously? And I'm, you know, one of the things I do when I'm in church, I try to think what you're thinking. I know there's some people right now going, church done about woe me out. We done been here, Aaron, 15 minutes. I got saved eight times, got the Holy Ghost. We, I got some sinning to do. <laughs> we will never beat the Methodists to the Chinese buffet. They have an underground tunnel. You don't know that. <laughs> but I won't be long or boring. If you have your Bible, I want you to find the book of 1 John chapter 3. When everybody look here for just a minute, someone asked me uh, yesterday uh, if, I would, if I would respond to a question that one of the listeners of my radio program had written in. And the question was basically this, Jamie... What do you think will be the greatest surprise in eternity when it's all said and done? What do you think the greatest surprise will be? Here's my answer. Professing Christians in hell. I think our churches are filled with people who think they're saved, but they're lost. Do you know that Billy Graham said, I believe that 90% of the church is unsaved? Do you know the great evangelist, Billy Sunday? He said, I believe that one out of two people who name Jesus will someday spend eternity in the region of the damned. Now, folks, this is, this is why I say that. There are people here right now, you've had your hands in the air and you've been, you've been dancing and worshiping, but you were looking at pornography last night. You were sleeping with a woman that's not your wife. I mean, how do you do that? How do you justify that? If your Saturday night don't match your Sunday morning, you've got a lot to worry about. Uh, this is, this is kind of one of those statements I hope you'll never forget. And you're going to hear it kind of run through the message. But God has never saved you if He hasn't changed you. Amen. By the way, I don't think I'd be talking now I think I'd be listening. It's not just the little kids in the nursery. You know, this is preaching time, y'all. Did you hear what I said? God's not saved you if he hasn't changed you. That means if you are what you were, you ain't. That's bad grammar, but it's good theology. I mean, honestly, doesn't it bother some of you that your last night resembles nothing like this morning? You, you, you cuss and you scream and you yell. And then you come to church. You know, I'm just so full of... G You're full of lies. Do you know the word hypocrite is not something people like to hear? But you're hypocritical. 
because you come to church. Well, the Bible says that. They profess that they know God, but in their works they deny Him. 2 Timothy says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof from search to turn away. 1 John says they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they would have been of us, they would have tarried with us. Instead, they went out that it might be made manifest. They were not all of us. Folks, our churches are... And do you know what? The devil is okay if you sit right in church and go, I'm okay. I'm preaching a message the other night on the reality of hell. Two teenage girls talking the whole time. What they didn't realize, the man sitting behind them came to church for his wife, her birthday. That's all she asked. Please come to church. Please come to church. All I want for my birthday is for you to come to church. Her husband was not saved. She said, I'm telling you, I think you'll like this guy. He came to church. On the way out, I saw her. She stopped by the table. I said, I, know, I noticed your husband didn't respond. I said, was he, did he enjoy the service? He, she said, truthfully... He couldn't hear anything you said because the two girls in front talked through the whole service. They sent him to hell. They'll send him to hell. You see, folks, we, we come to church and, and we want every... We, it's, for so many, it's just it's a show. I want people to see me. Now, I've sang and somebody needs to hear me sing. Wow. I've sat in church before and I've heard some of the best music and some of the most incredible gifted singers and I've sat there and said, where's God in all this? You know, your talent can take you where your character can't keep you. That's a pretty good word, isn't it? Talent can take you where character can't keep you. And if you have your Bible, I, I, I won't be long because I, I'd love for you to come back tonight. We're going to be back at 6. And I bring somebody you don't even like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm sitting next to her. <laughs> well, you married her. <laughs> somebody said, I don't understand my wife. Well, let's <laughs> take a number. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Moods can change dramatically. And some of you gals, you think you married the man of your dreams and 15 years later, you look over and realize I have married a couch that burps. <laughs> you, do you remember when somebody told you not to marry that idiot? Do you remember that? But you wouldn't listen. Do you remember that? You just wouldn't listen. <laughs> I make my own self laugh. By the way, if you're in a building and everybody's laughing but you, guess who might have a problem? <laughs> That's why you ain't got nobody. Oh, I can't get in a relationship. And I can get depressed by myself. I don't need to hang out with somebody to depress me. Can I get a, I know that right? I know that's right. <laughs> and there are people like that. Do you know what makes me mad? Yeah, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> you're going to, and it, confound it. I wish some of y'all quit coming to church to get offended. Come to get a blessing. Well, I, I'm serious about that. Some of you, all you do is come to find out what's wrong. Maybe you're what's wrong. I'm going to stop just for a minute until this talking quits. I'll start when they stop. They some people won't quit talking. So I'm gonna, next time I'm going to heal you instantly. <laughs> And by the way, if you're not talking, you ain't got nothing to worry about, right? I felt he was talking to me. I had the funniest feeling. I had a funny feeling. I'm talking. Hello. And if I was your mama, I'd pop you. Can I get a I know that's right? I know that's right. I can't control my teenager. Send him to my house. You want to know why you can't control your teenager? Because you started at 15. Yeah. If you can't control a two-year-old, you don't have a prayer at 12. I'd be John Brown if I had somebody say, yo, I ain't sitting down. <laughs> 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 you have the right to remain unconscious. Just lay there and take some deep breaths. 
When I was a kid, folks, when I was a kid, if I got in trouble at school, I was in more trouble when I got home. Huh? <laughs> Let me tell you, man, if you hit me, I'll call child protective. You know what my dad would have said? Well, you're at it. I ask him how to get this boot out of your back end because that's where it's going. That's what my daddy would have said. Uh huh. I think, I think we ought to be able to tase him. That's what I think. Just, there, ought to be, there ought to be toddler tasers and little higher voltage teen tasers. Yo, I'm not. So, that'd be great. Just, just lay there and wiggle a little bit. And... Just, just follow this for a moment, folks, because I'm telling you. Let me just say, I, I preached this message at the Coastal Evangelism Conference in Langston, South Carolina. There were over a thousand pastors there. I preached this message. Six senior pastors got saved after they heard this message. This is all I want you to ask. Am I spiritually alive? Am I saved? Number two, what evidence is there in my life that I am what I claim to be? First John is a book of evidence. That's all it is. First John says, I've written you these things that you might know that you have eternal life. What things? Things like First John 2.15. Do not love the world and do not love the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Things like 1 John chapter 3, which is our text, verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whosoever abides in him does not sin. By the way, if you have a pencil, you ought to just write this down. Th those verbs there, and, and I, I'm not going to get real uppity on you here, but those verbs in the Greek are in what's called a progressive action. If you were to read verse 8, verse 9... In a Greek New Testament, the verbs would read, He that practices sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, Whosoever has been born of God does not practice sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin or continually because he is born of God. And then look at verse 10. In this, or by this evidence... The children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness. Uh, can we take a time out? God is saying not only is it wrong to do what you shouldn't do. It's also wrong not to do what you ought to do. God says so it's not just about what you do that's wrong. It's what you don't do that's right. Unto him that knoweth to do good. And doeth it not to him it is. It's a sin. And folks, listen. I, I mentioned this the other day. The, mo the most unimportant thing to God is whether you're Pentecostal or whether you're Baptist or whether you're... Nat God, that means nothing to God. And wherever you are theologically, you say, I'm Arminian. I, I believe in eternal security. I don't believe in eternal security. I believe in speaking in tongues. I don't. I believe in baptismal regeneration, yet you do, he doesn't. That means nothing. What's important is, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Yes, Have you been saved? And I, it's a lot like a cell phone. Okay, unless you're a doctor or a drug dealer, you don't need one on right now. <laughs> Pastor Jerry already dealt with that. Do you remember when he said, do you, am I, do you have your cell phone thumb? Yeah, sure do. Well, somebody didn't. Now listen, I, I want to play words with friends. And, and do you know Facebook? I mean, seriously. I have Facebook, but I have it, I have it just to communicate. It's not, do you know, I wish people would just understand that sometimes I get mad. <laughs> I wish you'd understand. I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I don't care. Why are you telling 4,000 people what you ought to do is pick up the phone and call that person? Yeah. Yeah. You put that stupid... 
you know what? I was looking at Jessica's Facebook, and I saw where she, is that all the life you have? Stalking other people's Facebook? <laughs> and you know why you're laughing? Because it's true. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I was, I was saw where Justin, he was like, what did he do to his hair? <laughs> Wash it. <laughs> Why don't you give it a try, you know? <laughs> Who cares? Folks, do you know what's eternal is what's important? Amen. Now, now, now let me just, let me kind of give you the skinny here. <laughs> There's a word I don't use often. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, I make myself laugh. Uh, I tried this diet one time where you got this little book. It had all these little, it's like a billfold. It had all these little cards, and, and you, eat a, you eat a meal, and you exchange this for this. and It's like a little bill, deal a meal. That's what it was called, deal a meal. And the problem was, by about 10 in the morning, all my cards were gone. <laughs> Weight Watcher says this thing where you use points. You know, you get points. Again, I've already ran out of my points. I, but you know, they said I could borrow points. So if y'all need any points, just come. <laughs> he is a large man, isn't he? He's, he's a girthy man. What's funny to me is big people like me, they always say, you know, I don't eat anything. <laughs> Nobody believes that. <laughs> Fat didn't just fly from the heavens. <laughs> so I'm at the mall the other day, and, you know, I, I got to buy clothes wherever I can get them. Anything, just punch a hole in it and put it around me. And so I'm watching this gal. She's my size to the second power. She's at Victoria's Secret. She told her friends, she said, I just don't have the bone structure for these clothes. <laughs> it ain't bone structure. <laughs> do you know what, folks, honestly, do, 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 and I'm not, I'm not trying to trivialize being overweight or underweight, but you know what? Well, focus on what's important. Some of you worry about what everybody looks like and what they dress like and what their hair's doing and where they live and what they drive. And it's like you've got family that's unsaved. So let me, I, I'm just going to give you three of them, okay? There's tons. But if you'll let me, I want to give you what are the birthmarks of a believer. Just three of them. The first is a changed life. God has never saved you if he hasn't changed you. Has your life changed? And, and by the way, folks, it's not just on the outside. Do you know the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians 5 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love and it's joy and it's peace and it's goodness and it's meekness and it's temperance. And it's the, the, what is the fruit of the Spirit? It's the evidence that God lives in you. It, it, it comes out, it, it's a smile. Honestly, I, I, listen, I talked to Steve about this. This kind of got under my skin yesterday a little bit. We're at the park, Steve's singing his guts out. And all these Christ followers are at the park and nobody's even listening to him. But a handful of people. People over there flipping around, talking, and hey, hey, hey. I mean, that's okay, okay, I guess. We're at the park. But if we want the world to see something real, folks, they need to see dancing at the park. When's the last time you spoke in tongues at the grocery? Does the gift stop when you walk out the door? Answer the question. Have you ever been slain in the spirit at the mall? <laughs> why, why, why not? Why not? Huh. That's exactly right. I'm not in the spirit. Well, I got news for you. You may not be in the spirit, but if you're saved, the spirit's in you. And he don't get left behind when you walk out the door. Hello? I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid hearing things, I thought, I don't buy this. I don't buy this. And you know what? I'd hear preachers preach against this and this and this and this. Guess what? If it was wrong then, it's wrong now. So something is different. Either it wasn't wrong 
and you were. Hello? And if you were, you ought to be man or woman enough to acknowledge it. And say, I was wrong. I remember going to youth camp as a boy, and buddy, your head had to be shaved as bald as a billiard ball. And you couldn't, listen, the girls had to wear dresses that would drag trails behind them. I want to, folks, do you understand? You can be unworldly and still not be godly. Your life changes when you get saved. You're not mean all the time. It's like, what's wrong? Oh, that's just the way I am. It's not the way you ought to be. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Paul said, Paul said, lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds. Let me give you the second, let me give you the second birthmark. And there's tons, but let me give you the second one. Not only a changed life, but a chastened life. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens, and he scourges every son whom he receives. God says, if you are without chastisement, the King James Bible says you're bastards. Pastor Jerry, does it say that? For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son whom he receives. If you are without chastisement, you're illegitimate and not sons. I, listen, do you know who ought to be afraid in this building right now? Are the people that are living in sin and you see no chastening hand of God in your life. You know, God doesn't whip me. That's because you don't belong to him. I was uh, preaching a revival, gave the invitation. We had some folks come up to get saved, and one of the guys that came with his Bible, he's leading this person to Christ. He puts his Bible down, he starts crying. He said, he said I, I can't lead this guy to Christ. He said, I need to get saved. And you know, he was on the platform that morning. The guy was on the platform. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. And he's sleeping with a girl that's not his wife. Do you, folks, we're not talking about, hey, I slept with somebody. It's wrong. God, forgive me. We're not talking, hey, you know what? I, I went out and stepped into stupid and, you know, I made a mistake. Listen, he that practices sin is of the devil. 1 John 3, 9. Whoever is born of If you do, God whips you. And he whips you to bring him back to himself. I was talking about the band yesterday, your church band, by the way, and I mentioned how incredible. And I guess just in conversation, one of the guys I was talking to said, well, you know, the one guy went to Africa. Just came back from Africa. I went to Uganda three times last year. And uh, it'll just, it'll change your life forever. You'll never be the same. I was with kids. A $10 shot would have saved their life. Had they had it. But now they're dying. Do you know they were eating, do you know they were eating where I was at? They were eating grass. Eating what animals could get a hold of. I have a little thing in my, I call it a gig bag. It's in my bag. It's, it's, it's made by a company that builds, that makes uh, filters for kidney dialysis. It's a little thing about this big that you attach to a five-gallon bucket. And for over 10 years, it'll provide 100 gallons of pure drinking water. I've got them in my bag. It's incredible. 50 bucks, that's all they are. I got to thinking about that. You know what, folks? And here's the reason. Here's the reason I say all that. We complain and we gripe, and it's never enough. That brings me to the third point. A changed life, a chastened life. The third is a challenged, a challenging life. Folks, do you know what? You can't ever be what everybody wants you to be, but you can be what God wants you to be. There's some people who will never like you. Dr. Maurice Rawlings, he wrote a book. It's called Beyond Death's Door. 
He's a cardiologist in the Knoxville area. And matter of fact, he was one of those doctors when he came to the hospital, the nurses would just scatter because he was so rude. He was rude and he was abrasive, but he was an incredible cardiovascular surgeon. He's a great doctor. Do you know, he had a patient in his office one day and they were performing this. Do you know what a stress test is on the, kind of like on the treadmill? He passed out. Dr. Rawlings, an atheist, begins to, I guess if you're going to have a heart attack, that's a place to have it right there in the office of the most noted cardio doctor in the state, I guess, maybe one of the top in the world begins to resuscitate this man. In the process, the man looks at him and says, don't, don't stop. I'm burning in hell. Don't stop. I'm burning in hell. Dr. Rawlings bought a Bible. And only as a doctor could, he voraciously read it. And he was gloriously saved. Faith in Christ. Folks, I want to ask you a question this morning. And I love to come. I, I wish we could come more. I love Pastor Jerry. And I love the church. You've got something here, folks. You, I, honestly, and sometimes when you're a part of something, you don't see it. But you've got something here. But it needs to get from here out there. There's still a lot of lost people out there. Listen, listen very carefully. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven? Now, just think about it. Steve, will you come? Let me ask you this. How many of you believe, how many of you believe Satan is a liar? How many of you believe he's the father of lies? He has never spoke the truth. So would it not be just like him to let you believe everything's okay? Wouldn't that be like him? When it's really not. I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, be, just, wouldn't it be okay with Satan if he said... You know, just don't worry about it. You know, Jamie, I'm pretty sure that I'm saved. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm saved. I, I'm 99% sure that I'm saved. Guess what? That's right, I see you. If you're 99% sure that you're saved, you might be 100% lost. The Bible says you can be saved and you can know it. By the way, I believe if you're saved, you can know it. But I believe if you're saved, other people are going to know it. Does that make sense? By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And what is that? If you have, if you have love one for another. Not competition. I, I talked to Caleb yesterday, and I, I, and I just, I, I, I meant every word of it. He's so gifted. But I, I, I pray, I pray none of you let it go to here. Because it'd be very easy for that to happen. I, I, I pray that you'll be broken when you perform. I pray that people will see Jesus in you. I pray when you shout, he gets the glory. And I want to tell you something, folks. Here's a way to know if it's God. Whether you dance, whether you speak in tongues, whether you run, whether you raise your hand, if it's of God, it never takes the attention off him and puts it on you. He gets the glory. He gets the glory. He gets the glory. Boy, I feel something in this place. I don't, I don't know why we don't have week-long revivals anymore. 
It's like, let's just do this little thing and move on. Whatever happened to the old fashioned, come on, let's shuck some corn and see some people get saved and some lives get changed. Folks, do you feel him in the place? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, let's do this. I want you to forget about what anybody else may or may not think. I want you to forget that you're a charter member. I want you to forget you're a deacon. I want you to forget you're on staff. I want you to forget that you're a gospel singer or a teacher or a priest. I want you to forget all that. And I want, to an I, want, I want an answer to this question. Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Does your life bear witness to that? Do you know that you know? That you know that you know? I wonder how many friends today would just hold up your hand and say, Jamie, I'm tired of not knowing. Jamie, I'm tired of living in doubt and fear. I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved, but I don't want to live one more day wondering. And I'll be honest with you, Jamie, I'm not going to die and go to hell for anybody. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what anybody thinks. Somebody says, what if I get saved and I'm already saved? I don't believe you can do that. But if you could, I'd rather get saved twice than be lost once. I'd rather know that I know that I know that I know. I'll tell you something, folks. You've got to look at it. Don't be deceived. Many will come to me in that day and they'll say, Lord, we did all these things. Jesus said, I never knew you. By the way, he didn't say, I used to know you, but I don't know you now. He said, I never knew you. I want to ask you, how many friends would just hold up your hand and say, Jamie, pray for me. I'm tired of living in doubt and fear. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to heaven, but I do care enough about my soul to ask you to pray for me. How many of you take your hand? Hold it up as high as you can and say me. God bless you, 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 you. How many others? God bless you, friends. Put your hands down. How many others? How many others will say, Jamie, I know the real me. And I did not raise my hand the first time, but I'll tell you, I want to raise it now. I didn't raise my hand the first time, but I want to get on it. Jamie, I don't know that I'm saved. Pray for me. How many others would hold up your hand? And God bless you, honey. And God bless you, sir. And God bless you, teenager. And God bless you, young man. And God bless you, sir. I want everybody, I want everybody that raised your hand. Would you look right here at me? I, everybody that raised your hand, look right here. If you meant it, when you said pray for me, if you meant it, I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask you, in the name of Jesus, get up out of your seat. Come and kneel right. I'm going to pray with you. You asked me to. If you meant it when you said pray for me, I'm going to count to three. You come. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Just come right now. Come and take a knee if you're able. Come as close as you can. If you're at the altar, I want you to look this way for a moment. If you're here today and you never have settled that, that question of eternity, 
And the reason you're here today is you basically you say, Jamie, I just don't know that I'm going to heaven. I'm, I don't know that I'm saved. I don't know that I've trusted him. I want to tell you this. If you ask him, he'll save you. And not only will he save you, he'll wipe away every sin. You get to start all over again. You don't have to look back at it. He, you get, it's like God used Speak that over your... It's me. Now I want you to hear, hear this. This prayer won't save you. It's the heart you pray it from that will. It's not magical words. But if you pray and believe what you pray, God will save you. You get to start all over, which is kind of cool. Are you ready to pray? I want you to pray it out loud. I don't want you to whisper. I want you to pray it out loud. Are you ready? Dear Lord, Dear Lord I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I cannot save myself. And I cannot save myself. But I know you can. And that's why I came. With my mouth I confess. In my heart I believe. That Jesus died for me. And I place my faith. And I place my trust. In you Jesus. And what you did for me. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Please accept me. This is my prayer in the strong name of Jesus. I pray and I believe. Amen. Now I want you to look this way. If you meant what you prayed, your sins have been forgiven. Your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you understand that? Heaven is your home. The sin debt against you has been canceled. We don't want to hear any more about where... You need to quit defining your life by your failure. Well, I, you know, I got pregnant when I was 16. No, you had a beautiful child when you were 16. You made some poor choices, maybe. But you know what? To God be the glory. You still have a, you have a future with God. Do you understand that? Fail, failure is a moment. Somebody needs to hear this. Failure is a moment. Quit making it a monument. Qu quit, quit defining your life by your failure. Well, I'm married and divorced. Or I, I, I'm an alcoholic. Listen, you still have a future with God. You have a future with God. I want you all to stand to your feet. And I wonder, church, turn around and look at the church. I wonder if everybody at the church could let these folks know how happy you are. God bless you. You can head back to your seat. Everybody look this way. Pastor Jerry's going to come in a minute. You can just grab a seat. Folks, um, I hope you'll come back tonight. I hope you will. A lot of people don't come back on Sunday nights, and I've never really understood that. Because they talk about wanting to go to heaven. You know, I want to be in heaven. Well, guess what? That's God and Jesus seven days a week, 24 hours a day. How can you say you want to go to heaven when you don't even come to church twice a week? That makes, that makes no sense. I really want to go to heaven, really? Because that's like God around the clock. Your church offers two or three opportunities to worship and you come once every whenever. I mean, for real, for real. Hey, and do this, do this. Invite somebody tonight. It, it, honestly, invite somebody you don't like. They'll wonder what you're up to. God might change them. Hey, God might change you. Huh? Invite your uh, ex-girlfriend, invite her. Your wife may not like it, but. 
I love you and I like you. And we're going to be back tonight. Steve's got a brand new music project. I don't know why everybody wouldn't want that. I've got some DVDs. I'm kind of proud of my own self. They're in the... Stop by and pick up something, and if you get caught, be sure to pay for it. <laughs> the message you heard this morning is on DVD. Plus, we have a few more of these. I just love you are only one choice away from a different life. <laughs>